<laughs> okay, okay, culture lovers, we're back again uh, with me, David, at the Virgology Channel, watching episode five of the Book of Boba Fett, The Return of the Mandalorian. Oh, 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 who's this? Oh, oh, oh. we know who this is. Oh, 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 Mando! Mando's back, baby! You look lost. I'm here for Cava Baez. What makes you think he's here? Well, if I see him, I'll let him know. Yeah, that's not how I it goes. I see him right now. <clears throat> <laughs> that's not me. I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Snap! He's still got it, of course he will. Do the dark saber. God. <laughs> what? Oh, it's never far. Wow. Don't be so shy, though. Go come and shine on this spot. I'd like my reward and the information you promised. One touch up a poon, Amando. My business is my own. Where is it? Kiyotoba, only Shafulki, Fushinji. Where is the closest access shaft to the substrata? Okay. Ah. Oh. Okay. Should you be doing this while you're still injured? <clears throat> oh, there you go. The tribal marking, or the clan marking. <clears throat> oh, who's this? Oh, it's, oh, where have you been? Well, you're obviously here. Bring it to me. Have you ever heard of Bo-Katan Kreese? Bo-Katan is a cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. She once laid claim to rule Mandalore based purely on <coughs> blood and the sword you now possess. But it was gifted to her and not won by Kree. Oh, yes, that's right. Bo-Katan Kreese was born of a mighty house. But they lost sight of the way. Her rule ended in tragedy. They lost their way, and we lost our world. Had our sect not been cloistered on the moon of Concordia, we would have not survived the Great Purge. What shall I forge? Something for a foundling. This is the way. For a specific foundling. Grogu. He's uh, no longer in your care. Yeah. He's with his own kind now. I want to see him. Make sure he's safe. Hi. 
She's a badass. Ooh. Solus. <laughs> you are fighting against the blade. It gets heavier with each move. Maybe the dark saber belongs in someone else's hands. Oh, I got hello, hello. Wait a minute. Maybe it was forged by my ancestor, founder of House Vizsla, and now it belongs to me. Because you won it in combat. That's right. And now I will win it from you. <laughs> okay, all right. <clears throat> this guy looks like he can fight as well, you know. He looks like he's uh, he can kick an asshole too. And it's bigger than Mando's one. Right? It's much bigger than Mando's. Have you ever removed your helmet? No. Has it ever been removed <clears throat> by others? Never. This is the way. This is the way. Dinjarin, have you ever removed your helmet? <clears throat> have you ever removed your helmet? By creed, you must vow. Times. I have. Then you are a Mandalorian no more. Oh. I beg you for your forgiveness. How can I atone? Leave apostate. Oh. According to Creed, one may only be redeemed in the living waters beneath the mines of Mandalore. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You're going to have to remove your weapons. I'm a Mandalorian. Weapons are part of my religion. I'm sorry, sir. You can't board a commercial flight with your weapons. If you wish to discuss this with my supervisor, I will gladly book you on tomorrow's flight. <laughs> <laughs> Bureaucracy everywhere, right? religion oh hold on to it would you trust that I know everything that's in there Proceed. <sighs> what's next then for you then Mando can you be a can you could can you find atonement? Is it possible? <laughs> should be the other way, you should be kicking your seat. Oh uh, yeah. What you got there? What did she forge for? Rogu. Get in there and move 
that engine block so I can blast him. <laughs> just me shaking. No. You can't say no, you're a droid. What is this, a democracy all of a sudden? Or five? Right, thought so. Okay, it's not here. Maybe it ran... <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ship? Right this way. Ready to have your mind blown? Huh? Starfighter, handmade for the Royal Guard and commissioned personally by the Queen of Naboo. This is a pile of junk. While we're waiting, can I tell you a little something about this, honey? And I know she doesn't look like much, but you got here a lot earlier than I expected, and, and I didn't get a chance to finish. I mean, clearly, you can see I've got all the parts right here. Hmm? It all has a home. Look, a family of scurriers. Let's not disrupt the nest. <laughs> you know how hard it is to find all original parts from way back in the Galactic Republic? I mean, these are all handmade. No droids. And not only that, what I'm going to do, just because I like you, is I'm going to add on some custom modifications that'll make her faster than a father. And because this baby's pre-empire, she's off the grid. And did I mention she can jump into hyperspace with no docking ring? I mean, come on! You gotta see the potential! Woo! I'm telling you, Mando, you gotta believe me. This is a classic. Look, at least let me put her together before you decide. Can you give me that? There you go. Huh? Get this baby up and going. You know, it'd be a lot. Faster be helped. <laughs> He's a big spanner. Or oh, wrench for you, records. Oh, you're building montage over. one with a hole on the end that curves this way. I think I saw it once before over there in that pile near the circulators. <laughs> the entire vapor manifold is missing. Trust me, it's the last thing you want strangling your thrust capacitor is a vapor manifold. I fabricated you this induction intake charger that's gonna double your output coefficient. It'll also blow the shaft out of my motivator block. That's why I'm reinforcing your compression housing. And you can access it by using this Kinesio switch right here. You hit this button, you're going to evacuate your exhaust manifold, if you know what I mean. Oh, look at that second shape. Whoa, look at that. That's kind of sexy, isn't it? Start her up. Really? Yeah, start her up. <laughs> it's a little smaller, but there you go. It's not turning over. Give it a little bit more juice. But she's a starfighter, so fly her like one. Okay, I'll open her up. Woo! <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Dang, Ferret, she's fast. Let's see what she's got. All right. Great shot. Yeah. I'm not saying much in this episode. I'm enjoying it too much. So. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Some excellence. Was I doing something wrong, officer? <laughs> You're not allowed to fly that fast next to a commercial ship. You're also operating without a beacon. I'm gonna need you to run one for us. Sorry, officer. I got a little carried away there. Transmitting now. Hey! Mighty familiar. Did you used to fly a Razor Crest? I think you have the wrong guy, officer. That ship showed up on a transponder log back in Navarro <laughs> in an incident involving Imperial remnants. I'm just connecting some dots here. You mind answering a few questions? <laughs> Woo! Well, how was it? Wizard. <laughs> Those J type pulse engines really tighten the old evacuation port, don't they? Wizard? They used to say that like in oh, the seventies. Oh, by 70s. the way, an old friend of yours dropped by, said she was looking for you. A friend of mine? Don't worry. I told her I didn't know where you were. Then I locked her out and engaged the hangar security system. She tell you her name? Fennec Shan. <laughs> I thought you said that the hangar security system was on. Don't get away from me. You come right back here. The Fairfax engines. Someone's giving me some trouble. By any chance, are you looking for work? Might could be. Pay is good. <laughs> What's the bounty? No bounty. We need muscle. Boba Fett. He sure would appreciate it. Tell him it's on the house. Ah! But first, I gotta pay a visit to a little friend. Ah, so we can see Grogu. Oh, did not want that episode to end. It was so good. Uh, you know, a, a Mando only episode. A rare treat. I don't. I'm speechless. It was so much fun, and um, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's kind of shining. Actually, how the actual book of Boba Fett, the other episodes previously, could have been. Um, I know it's always that kind of nostalgia and affection, and affection to see a you know a, a previous character, you know, the Mandalorian, um, and actually getting a little sort of you know uh, Boba Light episode. Um, but it was so good. It was good to see him back. It's good to see what actually sort of happened to him afterwards. You know, still having the dark saber. Um, you know, reacquainting with uh, old friends and old clan members, and uh, you know, basically being excommunicated, unless he can find a way to rectify this. But I'm sure he probably will. But so much fun, just a lot of humour, you know, and a lot of. Um, you know, it was quite sitcom-y in many ways. <laughs> there were lots of sort of very sort of, you know, uh, tropes that we all, you know, all understand, you know, with the aeroplanes and the bureaucracy and all that kind of stuff. But it was good fun. So it actually is a nice um, appetizer, hopefully, to the next episode. Um, lots of that. It was just great. Wasn't it just great? Wasn't it just fun? Wasn't it nice to see him again? Didn't want that, didn't want that episode to end. Um you know, and getting a lot of sort of, you know, useful exposition as well. History of the Darksaber, you know, and, and the Jedi and all that. Kind of fantastic. Wonderful. I can't stop pouring praise on it. Um, and it would be interesting to see, and I'm going to go on, you know, online when this is, you know, put this up there, how people are reacting to it. How, you know, I've got a feeling that will this make Boba Fett better or worse? Will people say, well, can we not just have another extra Mandalorian season instead of the book of Boba Fett um, I'm still in the uh, I'm still sticking with the Boba Fett camp I still think there's a lot there and um, I hope that this is now we're going to be sort of moving in a direction you know where we're in the present day and we've got the pikes 
are we going to see, you know, the dust up? You're going to have this little lovely band of warriors going up against, you know, or going to war with the Pikes. Now, I'm anticipating that. It's, that's going to be, that's going to be pretty cool, isn't it? And I think we're going for a kind of Magnificent Seven thing. I, just, I said that just like, you know, as a throwaway line, but it kind of is like that, isn't it? So you think about it, you got Boba, you got Fennec, you got all the kids, you know, all those kids that he's a uh, street ganger that he recruited. Black Cassantin. Now he's got uh, the Mandalorian. So we, we, we're we doing a little bit of that, uh, you know, we do, we, we, we're recruiting. It's like, you know, it's, it's a seventh samurai. That thing's kind of, kind of happened. So it'd be interesting to see actually how this is going to uh, uh, work out. And it's interesting. There is a lot of Western. I think with Mandalorian as well, there was a lot of kind of Western tropes in that. I think I said before that um, the beginning, you know, with the uh, Boba and the Tuscans was very man called horse, very um, dances with wolves. You know, which are very old, very sort of well trodden tropes. Um, anyway, that was great. Um, next episode, are you going to be there with me? I think you should do. Anyway, like, comment, share, subscribe. On the screen, probably covering my face right now, is a video for you can probably click on and uh, have a watch. Come on, help me out. I'm new to this. See you later. Bye. Laugh it up, fuzzball.